What's up, everybody? Hi. Welcome to Piece of Authenticity. I'm going to do the announcer voice and make it sound really cool. Ugh, now I want to go to sleep. <laughs> um, you guys, do you have the... Um, the the Bible app thing that and you let the guy read it to you the U version yeah the U version app that'll so, put you to sleep yeah. real fast so switch over to the New Living Translation and listen to that guy talk to, like sometimes when I don't want to read for myself and I'm being lazy I'll just be like read know, to me you read, peasant read to me man <laughs> in my phone and so uh, it's just it's just really funny because his voice. And there are certain parts in there where he tries to get like really hype and he's trying to put emphasis on what he's trying to say and you just can't take it. Okay. Is that the translation that has like background music, like really dramatic? (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, there's a harp playing in the background. What is happening? (laughs) I think they put the music in the background because it's supposed to emphasize like when David used to play before Saul and it made the demons flee. And made his headaches go away. You know how I make the demons flee? In the name of Jesus. <laughs> okay. Drop the mic. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. We're glad that you guys continue to support us week in and week out. It's awesome. But, you know, kind of what we wanted to talk about today is you get what you pray for. And then some of you guys are like, negative. Yeah, the, I probably got that wrong. Yeah, right when Aubrey said it, they were like, eh, good try, buddy, but not not so much. Yeah. You should see my board of answered and unanswered prayers. <laughs> the unanswered is quite a bit longer. You said, <laughs> I thought you said none answered. I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's still the same thing because <laughs> none of them were answered. Um, yes. No, but seriously, I, I, think, I think that we all have to realize that the Bible is very clear, right, when it says that God's understanding is so far beyond ours that we can't comprehend what he's up to. It's true. But I will tell you this. If if you're that person that prays, you're a super spiritual person, and you pray just like this. Lord, please give me more patience, and let me be peaceful to everyone that I'm... Let there be peace in my family. Let me be a good example to everybody that, everybody that I come... Everybody. With, everybody. <laughs> Everybody that I come into contact with and, you know, you're super spiritual. It's like, Lord, build up my faith so that I can have the faith of a mustard seed that will move mountains. Those are all amazing things. And and it's cool to pray that. That was actually my prayer today. So that's rude. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Yeah. But see, so what what happens is the Lord hears all of our prayers, Mm -hmm. right? And so then he'll jump into action and he'll say, okay, because Aubrey wants more patience, I'm going to throw him into situations that require him to have more patience. That, uh, what is it? It's like when you work out, which I wouldn't know much about, but Aubrey does. Like, you have to carry pretty heavy loads to work out that muscle. Like, you yeah. can't just be like, oh my gosh, I went to the gym once. Look at this big muscle I have. You know, it, it doesn't work like that. And it's just like that in the spiritual too. You have to work <laughs> out your spiritual muscles of patience. You have to. It, Sorry, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at a lot of times when like, when pastors talk about stuff that you know that they don't do in real life. And Excuse one, me? No, no, but I'm Jordan. And by the way, Jordan does work out. She does dance to fit. So she's all like, Bum, 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 bum. and like and it's That's dancing right. and it's sweating and i tried i was trying to dance with her like the first night she was she was working on all these hip-hop dance moves That's and right. i'm not gonna lie to you it sucks i was all sweaty <laughs> and i already showered that day and i had to shower again so i used to make fun of dance fitness but That's then, right you did yeah but and i used to always i used to always do like silly stuff like oh, this oh so but annoying anyway um it's legit but what I was saying, though, is when people try to deliver biblical truths and and they do it in such a way to where you know in the back of your mind they really don't know what they're talking about, but it's like they Googled how to work out, you know, and then they sit there and go, whoa, yeah, well, trusting faith, building faith is like building muscles. And then you look at them and they have no muscles. <laughs> okay. No, they do have muscles, but they just don't know. Like, 
Are you flexing on me? No, I didn't really flex. I just put my arm up. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, so, so anyway, it just it just made me it just made me laugh right there because I, I thought about uh, one time I, I heard a message where where this guy was talking and, and he was talking about lifting at the gym and all this stuff and I looked at him and and you judged him. Well, a tree is known by its fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, maybe I did. Maybe I did. But either way, go ahead. Go ahead and say what you were saying, Jordan. I'm sorry to oh, interrupt. Oh, I don't remember anymore. I, oh, I'm sorry. I was a huge <laughs> distraction. <laughs> no. Um, it, it's like, we. I think sometimes when we pray the Lord, we pray for this beautiful little gift to come down from heaven brought to you by a dove and laid upon your hand you know what i mean like honestly i really think a lot of people are like give me patience so you're gonna wake up the the next morning and you're gonna be like version you're gonna be like mother Teresa, like (laughs) wow you just hit me in the face and i want to thank you like no that doesn't that doesn't happen because in our lives we're here to bring the lord honor and glory so the only way to do that is to work out our muscles just our yeah. spiritual muscles mm-hmm. <laughs> and to like the Lord will give you more, ex- more circumstances to where you need to lift some of the patients again and again and again, instead of just like a little gift sent from heaven above. Cause um, the only thing I can think of is like King Solomon, how the Lord said, I want to bless you with something. What would you like? And the Lord um, it mm. said the Lord was so pleased with him because Solomon was like, I want wisdom. And the Lord expected him to ask for riches or gold, silver, you know, all these different things. And he asked for wisdom. So the Lord was like, you know what? I'm going to give it to you because, you know. So, I mean, sure. If you have a Solomon moment, then maybe the Lord will bring you patience in the form of a dove upon your shoulder, which is right. the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so right. he will teach you that. <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, the thing is, the the Lord knows what we need, and I I'm I'm gonna touch on the Lord's prayer again here in just a second, but I think it's important to understand for all of us that are followers of Christ that James James chapter one I, I love this mm-hmm. tremendously. James chapter one has helped me get through some very tough times in life because it's helped me build an understanding of what it really means when you say, Lord, help build me up in my patience. Like I want to, I want to be more patient with people. I want to be more kind. And, and so James chapter one says, count it all joy when you Mm -hmm. fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So first of all, there's two of them that we just hit on right there. Lord, help Mm -hmm. build me up in my faith and help me build patience. You're basically praying Lord, bring trials upon me. Yeah, so I don't have a choice but now, to lean on you for that patience and right, for that faith. Right, and and here's the thing: a lot of people don't want to come to the realization that God is the one that takes you into trials. Everybody thinks that that following Jesus is supposed to be a a trip free, just you know, a long walk on flat, smooth surfaces and that that nothing can ever touch you. But James tells us to count it joy when we fall on trials. And because the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you Mm -hmm. may be perfect and complete, lacking Mm -hmm. nothing. And then it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be giving to him. Let him ask in faith with no doubt, for he who doubts is like a wave on the sea driven and tossed by the wind. I think that sometimes we we pray and we, we ask and we petition God for things, but when those things inevitably come upon us, we don't know and we think that he didn't answer our prayers when the reality is he did answer those prayers. It's just his understanding is way above yours yes. and he needs you to get to a certain spot and he's going to answer those prayers, but just in a way that you can't possibly fathom or imagine how it's going to happen. And so I, and I used to be the worst person about that. Every morning I would sit there, Lord, let me have patience today. Build me up, stir me up 
in my faith so that I can have that mustard seed faith. The mustard seed is so tiny, Lord. If I could just have faith the size of a mustard seed. And then inevitably, I would run into somebody that day that would royally tick me off. I mean, can, can we be real with one another for a second? Royally tick me off. And then I'm like, oh, man, I really prayed for this to be a good day. And this person's getting on my nerves. And the Lord's like, no, you prayed for <laughs> patience. Yeah, the Lord's like, hey, man, you prayed for patience. You asked me to help build you up. And to make you a more patient person. And so I put somebody in your path to test that. And you didn't count it joy when you fell on that trial. (laughs) That also reminds me, Aubrey, it was in Acts right after um, Pentecost and all of the the disciples turned apostles, you know, Mm. were um, just on fire fire and the Sadducees and Pharisees were not a fan because they were talking about the Jesus that they just crucified and how he rose again and now he's the Messiah and he's seated at the right hand of the father and they're like "Mm, that's not good and so they confronted I think it was uh Peter and John I think it was Peter and John if not if not it was Peter and James um either way James and John were brothers but um so they actually got pulled into like court, I guess, with the Pharisees and Sadducees. Mm. And they said, hey, um, we (laughs) don't want you talking about Jesus. You can come to the temple and you can preach as long as you don't talk about Jesus. And they're like, that's not possible because we're going to preach the gospel. The gospel is Jesus Christ, you know? And so um, they actually were in prison for a few days and then they let him out. And it said on the way back to where they were living, they were rejoicing because they were, they were, uh, um, what is it? The word, um, it's a P like attacked by somebody persecuted. Yes. They were rejoicing because they were persecuted for the name of Jesus. Like they were literally like, uh, like just having a good time headed back home. Like, yes. Have we been like that? Whenever we deal with prejudices Mm -hmm. against us or, um, do we, when our faith is tested (laughs) and our patience? No, I don't ever have somebody challenge me or get mad and then just go, yes, Lord, thank you for that. That made my day. Or we say it sarcastically, if I'm yeah, arguing. like I just did. <laughs> yeah. Sarcasm. Uh, yeah. Well, okay, so so there was another example that, that you were talking about. What what I find interesting about, about the Lord and about when we pray is, uh, who was it? Was it Paul or was it Peter that we read about? And they were going in front of the Pharisees, and the Lord told them not to prepare what they were going to say Peter. beforehand. That's yeah. what, yes, yeah. that. Yeah, and, and mm-hmm. Peter, was. he said, you know, the Lord told him, don't prepare. Yeah, don't the Holy come. Spirit will speak. Yeah, don't come with a defense because as soon as you get up there, the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. Mm. And um, the Bible says that when he did that, that his words divided the the Pharisees, some of them were transformed mm-hmm. by what he said yeah. because it wasn't it wasn't him speaking; it was the Holy Spirit. And then the other half still wanted to argue and still wanted him thrown into prison and persecuted. But I, I think it's it's important though that you know he was still praying, but then the Lord told him, "Hey, don't don't try to defend yourself. Don't come to your own defense because I'm your defender, and I'm going to do that mm. when you step up to the plate. I'm going to provide you." what you need in that moment. And you know, maybe our prayers should be switched instead of Lord, give me patience. Maybe uh, Lord, give me the perseverance to grow stronger in my patience. Holy spirit, fill me every morning so that whenever I go through um, trials and tribulations through today, that my patience is strengthened. Maybe we should ask that more so because, you know, Aubrey, I don't know. I want to say this and and you just like have a conversation with me about it because I kind of want to argue that there's no such thing as an unanswered prayer. The Lord does answer it. I believe he answers every single prayer, but it might be what you don't want to hear. So maybe Mm. it's not answered because it's not the way you wanted it answered or it's later. You know, maybe the timing was off like, Lord, bring this to me and it still hasn't happened. Doesn't mean it's unanswered. Um. You know, I just thought about that, and I think we should we should ask these questions that are a little bit out of our th- um, theological comfort zone, if you know mm. what I mean, because we all grow up with certain traditions and certain ways things have always been, and sometimes I don't think we question things enough, Yeah, because Jesus even had enough grace for Thomas, poor guy, he's called Doubting Thomas, 
Why is everyone remembered for their worst things? Like, oh, David and Bathsheba's like, bro, I've yeah. done so many more things. Yeah. You know, but like even with doubting Thomas, Jesus allowed him to feel the holes in his hands. He allowed him to feel the hole in his side. He had grace for him to be like, you have questions and that's okay. I'm the God of the universe. I can deal with your questions. I can deal with, and I think the Lord wants us to question more. He doesn't want us to just think th- something set in stone forever because Aubrey, like we both know he's been challenging our mindsets that we've had ever since we were little kids when it, you know, it comes to him and the way he functions and the way his church is supposed to function and all these different things. And so asking the question, is there such thing as an unanswered prayer? I think not. Yeah. I think that seasons, seasons are important. Also, a lot of times we only like the harvest season oh, yeah. where we like to reap the harvest of what hard work we think that we've put in, in the past. Yeah. But having the discernment to understand what season that you're in and understand that your prayers, everything that you're praying for might not happen that day, but it could be like you said, a different time. It doesn't mean that God said no. It could be, he's just saying not now. And you know, God is always a saying yesterday, today and forever. I know we say that all the time, but that's so important. That is always our common denominator. Whenever we ask the Lord questions or, or, you know what I mean? We have these certain thoughts in our mind and stuff like that. And I just think that that's so important to remember because it even takes me to um, the blind man and the disciples asked Jesus, hey, who sinned? Was it his parents or was it him? And Jesus Mm -hmm. is like, that's not even what it is. It's to show like it's for the glory of God to be made evident to people. So that changed the disciples mindset because they're like, oh, well, we've always learned that if someone's blind or someone's lame, I mean, that's obviously They did something wrong or somebody in their family did so the Lord's punishing them. Yeah. And that's not, that's not it. The road should be easy unless if you sin, then it gets rough. Yeah. If if you act perfect and try to do everything possible that you can and usually your own strength, um, then the Lord will grace you. That's not, that's not it. You know? Oh, I said, you know, I was going to stop saying that. (laughs) The filler word. Okay. So... (laughs) So Matthew, right, chapter six. Uh, yeah, I know him. Uh-huh. It's it's amazing because <laughs> listen to this. This is this is about to change your life. What? Jor- oh my gosh. Jordan is about to get saved. Oh man, thank right you. Now. Yeah. So but when you pray, mm-hmm. go away by yourself. Oh yes. Okay, shut I'm the door assist. behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. I think it's important to stop right there and say, the Lord's not going to reward you how you think you should be rewarded. Yeah. How we expect. We, we read, we often read the Bible with a filter on it and and we put an expectation on something and I'm just as guilty as the next person. When, when I think of something, I'm like, oh man, Lord, it would be really cool if you do this for me or Mm -hmm. man, what's, what's the reward? There's also the high possibility that the reward that you receive won't be until heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like the Bible says, don't store up treasures here on earth that dust and moth and can all destroy, right? That we're, we're storing up treasures for a place that we go. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. But so Jesus goes on to say, when you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again, (laughs) man. Um, Lord, I repeat, like, please stop. (laughs) Don't be like them. There it is again. He says, he says, when you pray, don't babble on like the Gentiles do. And then he says, don't be like them. So there's twice. So Jesus says it twice. So I think he's trying to get them to understand um, that this is important, what he's about to say. And it says, don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need need, not want, Mm. exactly what you need before you ask him. And you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, Mm -hmm. may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food that we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't lead us, don't let us yield to temptation, sorry, but rescue us from the evil one. So Man. I, I think that when 
Jesus left it simple for us when he said, when you pray, go to your father and say this. I, I don't, I don't see a lot of selfishness in any of this praying. You're literally saying, Lord, your name is great. We're asking that your kingdom, heaven, come here. And I think that's one thing that a lot of Christians are are holding off and they're waiting for heaven. And they're, they've, they've pumped the brakes on everything that they're doing. And it's like, yeah. oh, Lord, just come and rapture us. All we can do is hope to go to heaven soon. Right. Is that all we can do? That's That goes, that goes completely against what Jesus said to do when you pray. He said, may your kingdom come here. The kingdom of heaven come down. Not not us sit and wait for anticipation. Now, don't get me wrong. Heaven is the goal. The Bible says that we are just sojourners here. This is just our temporary home. But the goal is heaven. Mm -hmm. And so when you're when you're looking at it like that, you're literally saying, Lord, let your name be kept holy. Let your kingdom come here. Neither one of those has anything to do with us. The only one that has to do with us is give us today the food that we need and help us to forgive those who trespass against us, right? Because in order for us to be forgiven, we have to forgive. Mm -hmm. But the only one that's like, give us today the food that we need or give us this day our daily bread. I love that though, because I think a lot of us always plan ahead and store up things ahead, which is wise, right? But in that prayer, it's to ask the Lord for our food today. And that's how our walk is with him most yeah. of the time. And in a lot, uh, what's that scripture, Aubrey, where it talks about the man can plan and plan, but I ultimately, my will will yeah. be done. Like we can plan ahead six months, right? We always ask, I feel so bad. I think honestly, we should stop asking um, kids what they want to be when they grow up. It sh that should be stopped, honestly. But um, because give us this day, our daily bread, let's follow like the Israelites. Why did the Lord just drop manna? in the morning and then if they tried to store it up for the next day it was rotten yeah why don't, don't what was he teaching us like i was talking to my friend yesterday and she said there's not one thing the lord has done that there's not something to learn from or there's not a reason why he did it you know sometimes when you ask your kid i mean gray doesn't talk yet but i remember when i was younger my mom's like so why did you do that i'm like i don't know i don't know and it's like, well, mm -hmm. the Lord never does that. He could give you like five reasons why he did something, you know, or actually no, probably like a million reasons why he did something. But I don't know. It's just give us to stay our daily bread. And earlier, Aubrey, when you were talking about the prayer, <clears throat> I just thought, what is faith for? If we expect every time to pray that he's going to give us something, then why would we have faith? I mean, you don't have to have faith whenever you go to McDonald's, order something on the menu and go around and be like, oh, praise God, it came to me. Well, no, you My ordered double a double burger. pounder. Yeah, you ordered a double pounder and you expect it. That's not faith. That's, I've seen it done so many times. I just know it's going to happen. So faith. Why? You know, I think that fills a lot more gaps too with prayer and unanswered prayer. It's, is your faith an, like enough? Is God enough the lord mm. teaching you is that enough mm. yeah that's that's good food for thought i mean here's here's the ultimate thing that i wanted to express through this all of the things that we said in the beginning lord help us build up our patience help us build up our faith none of these are bad things to pray that they're not that um we should all probably be praying those things. But what we have to do is switch our perspective off of what we think that that looks like and be willing to take on the trials and everything that come with it. A lot of times we, we pray and pray and pray and then we don't feel like we're getting what we're supposed to be getting. Mm -hmm. And so then we give up or we lose heart and we're just like, man, every time I pray that things just keep getting harder. Maybe the Lord is trying to teach you something through those prayers and said, okay, if you want big faith, you got to go through big trials. If you want big patience, then then that you're, if you want perseverance, then your patience has to be tested. It, it's, it's irons in the fire. When gold goes into the fire, all the impurities come out. Mm -hmm. And so when you want to, 
go and grow in those areas, you have to be willing to do what God wants to take you to do in order to receive what you're praying for. Ooh, we should stop because this is a two-part thing, and that was a really good end. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad we agreed. Yeah. Okay. So, so, okay. So here's the thing <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. To be continued. Dun, dun, dun. No. Um, part two is going to be not only about prayer, but it's going to be about how when, or about when you pray for others. Because mm. I think it's important that not only do we learn how to pray and we expect the trials that come with prayer, but also how to stand in the gap for somebody else. But thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's always it's always a fun time because every time we bring something to the podcast, it's because it's something that the Lord's already working on the inside of us. So it's a lot of fun to be able to just take off and be like, these are the revelations that that the Lord has been showing us. But I'm I'm excited about part two. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and so we will see you soon. Bye, bye. Look at... Uh, Bob. <laughs>